to another special episode of True Talk. My goodness. And we have somebody very special here with us. <laughs> somebody so dear to us. You're very welcome, Ma. You're welcome, Ma. Yes, Ma. So um, we call her Dr. Stella. We call her Mama Stella. She's just so dear to us. She's a mother. She's a doctor. She's a philanthropist. She's a woman of all talents. <laughs> so Ma, can we just, can you just introduce yourself? Well, I'm Dr. Stella Emanuel. I live in Houston, Texas, in America. And I think a lot of people know me from my very loud and public <laughs> outcry in 2020 when I screamed on, in, in front of the steps of the Supreme Court that something doesn't exist. No, no I didn't say it doesn't exist. It's treatable. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So, everybody kind of knew about me from then, you know. Mm -hmm. Before then, I was a regular doctor in Houston. And then... Uh, the Lord, by His grace and mercy, used my voice to mm -hmm. kind of just break fear mm -hmm. over the whole world at that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, then I went viral, and mm -hmm. the rest is history. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you so much for that. What an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So, well, I'm a physician. Okay, this is what I say, right? Okay. My main job is an intercessor for the nations. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a prophet of God by calling an intercessor mm -hmm. for the nations. And then, you know, my side hustle is being mm -hmm. a doctor and a businesswoman. So that's my side hustle. Wow. <laughs> that's a major side hustle. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes. Wow. And thank you so much for that, mm -hmm. Ma. So before we go into, you know, the crux of this interview, let's just go on a very short break. Be right back. How would you like to come up with an amazing script? and bring the story to life through professional acting. Set your lights, camera, and call action in cinematography. I said call action in c- uh, Now, merge your shots in video editing and spice it up with a little visual effect. Oh, let's not forget background music and sound effect. Export and upload on social media. If this is for you, then you don't want to miss this year's edition of the Mount Zion Film Academy. The Mount Zion Film Academy presents one month immersive training in content creation from the 3rd to the 31st of August 2024. Facilitators include Damilola Mike Bamiloye, Joshua Mike Bamiloye, Kunle Adekwaju, Omolara Ayola, Ara Effect, and other seasoned teachers. Registration fee is 30,000 Naira or $35. Only registration through the link is valid. It's going to be a time of mind shift and technical empowerment. You don't want to miss it. And the Children Creative Bootcamp also holds from the 5th to the 9th of August. From ages 12 and below, register your children for a time of fun and creative enlightenment. So, see you in class. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome, Welcome back. back. So, we'll just ask a couple of questions. Sure. Yes. So I'm we'll, ready to answer. Yes, ma'am. So, we we'll really, really love to meet you and to know you more because, yeah. like, there's so much behind who Dr. Stella Emmanuel yes. is. So, yes. we'd like to know your background, mm -hmm. how you came to meet the Lord. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, since you're an, uh, a prophet and an evangelist, so we want to know more about and that. Successor as well. Yeah. Uh, I am actually from Cameroon. Okay. I was born in Cameroon. I went to medical school in Nigeria and University of Calabar. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated from here, I moved to the United States. And I was a heathen when I was in medical school. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I went to the U.S., did my residency, moved from, I didn't residency in New York, moved to Alexandria, Louisiana, a small town. I was still a heathen, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, somewhere along the line, you know, God in his infinite mercy came for me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was busy, you know, living my life, partying, sinning, and doing all the things that heathens do. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord came for me, and uh, I gave my life to Christ. And um, actually, it was interesting because I went from getting saved to becoming mm -hmm. a minister of the gospel, like, within a year. Mm -hmm. I was one of those people that God really did, like, a really, really quick walk in, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got saved, and um, 
I got saved within like a few months. I ran into somebody that gave me a copy of prayer ring. Mm -hmm. So I just started praying all the prayers, like all of them. So, and I think with praying a lot and, you know, spending a lot of time with the Lord. And uh, somebody told me that you need to read the word, you need to read the word. And being that, I think I'm one of those people that everything that I do, I really put all my head into it. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a heathen, I was a really good one. <laughs> I put all my head into partying and, you know. So when I got saved, I put all my head into salvation. So I jumped into it. Within like a year, I finished reading the Bible. I was mm -hmm. praying all the time. And so I went from being saved to being a minister in like a year. Yeah. From being saved to casting demons out of people like within wow. a year. So I'm just one of those people that God just kind of grabbed me, be the living daylight <laughs> out of me and dragged me straight into ministry. And I've, you know, so people that knew me when I was in the world, they're like, they call me Saul of Tassie. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could that, what, Stella, you're saved? That's, mm -hmm. wow. that's yeah. amazing. That's really so that's encouraging. Kind of yes. Because some, someone out there may feel like their case is like so bad for mm -hmm. God to save and they're mm -hmm. sinning and everything. But yeah. this is really encouraging that there's no one who cannot save and Use yeah. and transform. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm a good, a good example of one of those people that God didn't have to save because, like I said, I was really just having fun, patting, mm -hmm. drinking, patting, plop, everything. So when God came after me, it, to me, I was just happy to be saved. You know, a lot of people that grew up in church and I spend more much time in church, like, you know, kind of take God for granted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, I was just so happy to be saved. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just glad that I'm saved. Like, even till today, I'm just always just glad that I'm saved. If like if God never does anything for me, never gives me anything, I'm just happy that He saved me. So that to me is enough, you know. So I'm I'm always I think that gives me a, a sense of gratitude, you know, the way the Lord saved me and beat me up within like a year, got me into ministry and everything. I just always have that serious gratitude for the Lord, you know. So I'm always just glad that I'm saved. You know, I tell people all the time, I don't know what you're expecting from God, but if He saved you, you should just be grateful. If he never does anything else, you know. So. It truly is a call to the whole point of Christianity mm -hmm. and salvation. Like the point is that Jesus saved us from mm -hmm. our sins, and yes. we should always be grateful for that. Even even if nothing, even if nothing happens, mm -hmm. the fact that we're saved is enough you know, to just say thank you, Jesus, every yes. day. So yes. thank you, Ma, for reminding us for that. Yes. Yes. God, you know, there are a lot of people out there that don't know God, mm -hmm. that are actually going through, and they're dying and going to hell yes. without knowing God. You know, Very so true. it's it's really um it's I'm just grateful. <laughs> and that's what all of us Christians should be just grateful yes, that we got yes, saved, yes, you know. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for that, Ma. So, for let's say there's somebody watching out there, because you said you went from, you know, being a heathen <laughs> to a minister to being saved and being a minister. Um, what are some of the challenges you, you experienced maybe in your journey as a, a now born again Christian? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the challenges? Because there may be people out there that just give their life mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, this is, I'm it's struggling so with this mm -hmm. yeah. so much. I'm trying to find a balance. Yeah. And all that. Actually, actually, from salvation to being a minister took a really short time. Mm -hmm. But from that time to getting to a place of like walking in my true calling and sanctification mm -hmm. took a longer time. It took me maybe mm -hmm. about four years. I would say that because I was a minister of the gospel, still every now and then drinking, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine I got saved and I was casting demons out of people and then still doing some hedonic stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And then I think the way the Lord... And I didn't have any mentors. That's the crazy part about my salvation experience because I didn't really have... I was in Louisiana in a small town where, you know, most churches there... I, I got saved in a nice white little church in, in there. There was no really exposure to warfare and all the things that, you know, that the Lord was calling me into. So, like I said, I got a copy of Prayer Rain and I just went off and I started praying. So, mm -hmm. I, so this anointing came upon me and I was serving God but I still had things that I was dealing with. And I think because I still had all these open doors, I got beat up a lot, mm -hmm. you know, so I got beat up a lot. I got, you know, depression, anxiety, uh, you know, things like, you know, insomnia and stuff, you know. And I was dealing with this stuff because God was preparing me for a time. God was working on me. I just did not have anybody to show me the way on some things, you know. Mm -hmm. Basically, most of the church I grew up in, I was in at that time. If you pay your tithes, everybody was happy. It doesn't matter what else you did. And a lot of churches right now, everybody's just happy with you if you pay your tithes, you know. So they don't, <laughs> it don't matter what you do. You, know, you can bring your boyfriend to church. And as long as you pay tithes, you're good to go. 
So mm-hmm. that was the kind of the place I was in. So mm-hmm. there was no um, sanctification being taught. Mm-hmm. There was no true holiness being taught. But there's one thing that I learned in that church was who you are in Christ, which mm-hmm. kind of like gave me a foundation to help me. So I went through a lot of pain and a lot of crazy stuff happening to me. Mm-hmm. And I think the Lord allowed those things to happen so that I could truly come to a place of sanctification with him. Mm-hmm. You know, so in my praying all the warfare prayers that I was praying, it helped in my sanctification. You know, I tell people all the time, I said, there are many things that we in the body of Christ were dealing with. A lot of people struggling with different things, especially ministers, because you get saved, you get called, you start praying all the time to minister to other people. Mm-hmm. Your, most ministers are not praying a daily sanctification for themselves. Mm-hmm. So as they go to preach, there's, you know, things come in, uh, many things, you know, sometimes you cast demons out of people, you pray for people, and the things that the people are dealing with, there's transfer of spirits, mm. and some of these things come back to attack you. And if you don't spend quality time in personal deliverance and personal sanctification, it can become a burden on most ministers. Mm. So that is kind of the initial training the Lord gave me was mm. personal prayers, personal sanctification. So I kind of grew up in that, you know, just praying. And, and as I was praying, the Lord was cleaning me out and it's taking desires out of me that I could not take out of myself, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I do believe that till today, the, the clearest way to, to really serve God is to always have a time of personal sanctification prayers. Because, you know, um, salvation is free. Mm-hmm. Um, the call of God can come upon many people. Yeah. And a lot of people do serve God with that call. But the call of God upon your life doesn't necessarily mean you're right with God. You know, mm-hmm. you could be, there are many people that can, the Bible says that you can actually serve the Lord and like Apostle Paul said, and become a castaway. Mm-hmm. You know, like the story of King Saul, mm-hmm. you know, you know, King Saul was fired in his second year and continued to rule Israel. Mm-hmm. Or like the story of Moses. Mm-hmm. Moses hit the rock twice. And, and because of that, he did not enter his own promised land. He disobeyed God. Mm-hmm. But God still produced water to his people. Mm-hmm. So when I started getting all this, you know, you could actually be doing, working for God Mm -hmm. and you have to deal with your own stuff, Mm -hmm. you know. So that is kind of how I started dealing with personal sanctification. I think that has kind of taken a lot of clarity from from me, you know, because in this day and age, there's a lot of seducing spirits talking to people Mm -hmm. and people are doing a lot of things in the church that is so out there. Mm -hmm. But when you pray sanctification prayers, like I pray prayers, like everything inside of me resisting God Mm -hmm. should should leave me and Lord Mm -hmm. change my thoughts, my ways, my Mm -hmm. desires, you know. So those kind those prayers helped me to clean up. Mm -hmm. Yes. So powerful and it really reminds me of the Bible character Samson Mm -hmm. who was (laughs) anointed, chosen, Mm -hmm. even um, even was spoken of before he was even born mm-hmm. and yet he wasn't living a life that was pleasing to God but mm-hmm. God still used yes, him to yes, deliver yeah. the children of Israel mm-hmm. and it's, it's, it's so timely and salient for the time that we're in you know some people confuse anointing for being right with the Lord mm-hmm. and just like you said salvation is free but sanctification is work mm-hmm. sanctification yes. is being intentional about you know your life with mm-hmm. the Lord so mm-hmm. thank you so much Matt, for that um for that, for re-echoing that. <laughs> Amen. Yes, ma'am. So, um, there is a question that has been in my heart that I want to ask. <laughs> it is, how how um, did you um, develop such boldness to stand for Christ and to stand for truth, even when, you know, opposition there were so many oppositions, especially that, that time, that period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A period that we're all familiar with. I know, <laughs> right? You know, I've one of my uh, the, one of the books that I wrote is uh, the, my last book. I've written thirteen books. One of my last book is uh, "Let America Live." If you cannot read about it, it cannot tells you my story. But I would say this that I was actually born bold. <laughs> yes, because Ow. when I was young, as a teenager, I was like buff. My parents, <laughs> my teachers. I remember one of my teachers looked at me and told me that this one, you will never amount to anything because I was so rough. I don't blame him. I was rough. You know, I was the one that would fight with boys and do all kinds of stuff. So I was really, I was always rough. So when I was younger, people looked at it like, what kind of a child are you? Can you calm down? Why are you so rough, tomboyish and blah, blah. So 
it was just the grace upon my life. Mm -hmm. As I grew older, that same thing that people used to want to hit me in the head when I was young was what they appreciated <laughs> as I grew older. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started residency, I walked in the first day in the emergency room with this attitude of I knew what I was doing and whatever you did, you need to give me, give it to me, I will do it. Everybody hated me. They were like, what do you think she is? She just, she just walked in here. She doesn't look afraid. All the other residents, new residents, they are walking like, oh my God, something's going to kill me in this place. I'm looking at like, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so they hated me in my first year. Everybody was like, what's wrong with you? But in my second year, all the attendings will just trust leaving the ER with me because, mm -hmm. oh, if it's Dr. Stella, I say she can handle it. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's always been in my character. I, mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I said, the things that I do and the way that I do things, I was wired this way. Mm -hmm. God wired me. Like, you know, one of the scriptures God always gives me is, is Jeremiah 1, 5, that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I, you know, I would, I knew you, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. So that's one scripture God always comes back and reminds me of. Mm -hmm. So I was actually just born that way. The way my brain works is, is the way the Lord wired me. When I was young, I used to think I was older than a bag of chips. <laughs> but now that I've gone older with the Lord, I recognize that it's grace. Mm -hmm. I recognize that it's just God's grace upon my life. The ability to do three, four, five, six, seven different things and just look at them and say that, you know, and just put them together is is just is the way I'm wired. So I, I thank God for it. I can't take any personal responsibility for it. <laughs> you know, I used to look at people, why can't they just do this and that and that, you know, but I realized now that they can't do it because God didn't wire them that way. So mine was my wiring. When I got saved, I they told me, read the Bible. I finished the Bible in one year. When I when I do things, you know, I just do them. I don't, you know, I don't sit down and think twice, you know. I can see things and be able to say this is what I need to do and get it done immediately. I don't, I don't have those. So it's just it's my wiring. Yes. That's what I would say. It's I just picked something from that. Thank you very much, Ma. Someone it, to me just points to the fact that God can sow a seed in mm -hmm. you or a trait like this, yes. and you can the devil can snatch it and mm -hmm. use it negatively. Mm -hmm. And that's why in, when before you gave your life to Christ, there were negative comments about you. Mm -hmm. But now when you give your life to Christ, God was able to use it for yes. His glory. So yes. it's just to us to take home that let's look within those things in us that make us different. Are mm -hmm. we allowing them to to glorify God mm -hmm. or yes. using them otherwise? Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Ma, in the US, knowing fully well that um, the Western world has, will I, be, will I say, been polluted to an extent. There's so much, the line has been blurred. Mm -hmm. The black and the white and the gray. How have you been able to stand mm -hmm. for Christ? How have you been able to keep upholding your You know, uh, four years ago when I went viral, mm -hmm. The first thing that they did is that when I pulled my ministry, I'm a deliverance minister. I, you know, I did deep deliverance messages and um, they're on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And uh, people will watch my messages and go through deliverance. They'll just watch my message and they'll be throwing up on the floor without, you know, without even talking to me. Until today, that still happens. So the Lord will just pour out his grace even through the messages. Mm -hmm. So when we went viral, so when we went viral that day, it, let, let me just say one a little thing about that day. I always tell people that uh, the reason why the Bible says that, you know, they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony because they love not their lives unto death. Mm -hmm. uh, when I left Houston, I had decided in my life, heart that I just could not let people die. Mm -hmm. So when I left Houston and I was going to D.C., I called my family and I told them, I said, I'm going to D.C. I might not make it back. Mm -hmm. They might kill me. And oh. if I perish, I perish. I just was not going to let people die. Uh, this is, I was at that stage in my life that I was like, you know, I did not love my life unto death. You know, so because of that, that day when I stood in front of that mic, I, like, I went royally off. I was like, <laughs> I just went off. Uh, I had no fear. The reason I had no fear was because I had counted the cost. And if the cost was killing me, so be it. And with that, God could use my voice to break fear over the whole world. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, everybody was like, we're all going to die. You know, and God could just, because whenever you get to it, I perish, I perish, mm -hmm. you don't perish. And God is able to use you. So, and then when that happened, it became crazy because, I mean, I was in the hotel. I didn't know what was happening. And people called me, oh my God, your video is going viral all over the world. And then the next thing, oh, they are screaming about you on TV. I was like, okay, great. I don't watch TV. So I didn't even know what was going on for like, it took me like, three days to actually see what was going on, you know. So, man, they were talking about me. They had, like, <laughs> two things. Number one, I'm, like, 
overly thick skin. I really don't care what people say about me. I preach the gospel. I talk. I preach to one person, and his name is Jesus. Everybody else doesn't really matter. As long as I'm pleasing to the Lord, everybody else can come in any order. I don't care. So that is the first thing. It's like, I don't care. So when they were like, oh, we're going to do this, this, that, or they call me names, they call me witch doctor, they call me all kinds of stuff. I was like, really? Thank God. I said, Jeremiah was thrown in the system. At least just calling me names is not that big of a deal. <laughs> so, so they started calling me names. And I was like, what, CNN, you're calling me names? I said, I'm going to cast demons out of you. So I threatened to cast demons out of them. And then I went and did a show. And I said, if you come after me, it's going to be on. I'm a sniper. You know, I'm a child of God. And I carried the Holy Ghost. And I went crazy. And I was like, wow. And I, so I, I pushed back and I defended my position. So it became, I'm a woman of science and I'm a woman of the spirit. I'm going to preach the gospel. If you're going to bring me to talk, you're going to hear about Jesus. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So I established, yeah, established, I established myself as a woman of science mm -hmm. and a woman of the spirit. Until mm -hmm. today, I, you call, I talk on television everywhere and I just preach. Mm -hmm. I tell you, if you don't give your life to Christ, you're going to die and go to hell. In front of, like in front of a mixed multitude. And I just say and everybody kind of expects me to say it. Everybody like, okay, Dr. Stella, what is God saying? I said, you know what? If we, Do you think God's going to save America? I said, if we don't repent, no. <laughs> so, so I think it just, that boldness yeah. has always been in me. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was either I was going to run and hide mm -hmm. or I was going to stand for who God has always called me to be. And to be honest, I am a trained warrior. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about years and years and years of being in the warfare ground. You know, like since 2020, we started a prayer meeting. We pray every day at the ranch that we have in, in Texas. We pray every day, three to four hours. We've been praying for river every day for four years. We've kept that altar burning every single day. So I come out of that altar to the places I need to go. So I'm, whatever I do or say out there is backed by a deep spiritual altar. Mm -hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? So it's not, the devil cannot just be like, I'm just going to attack her because try it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't shoot blanks. Mm -hmm. We fight back. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's wow. so deep. The, like, and, and there's a confidence that just comes from knowing that you have that spiritual backing. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Thank you very much for that. So for someone that is, for the younger generation that are upcoming and they're in the, you know, Western world and they're feeling like, I don't know how to stand for Christ in mm -hmm. the environment I find myself. Maybe I find myself around heathens mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's a struggle for me. What encouragement can you give to such a person or such people? I tell everybody in this season, and I think it's not just in the Western world. I think even in Nigeria, there's a lot of corruption in yeah. the church. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want people to realize that um, in the last days, there's going to be, per this is, these are perilous yes. times. There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of seducing spirits and um, you have to be grounded in the word. Read the Bible, be grounded in the word because if you are not grounded in the word, you will be deceived. Mm -hmm. It's not, you see, I, sometimes I see stuff online and I was like, some stupid stuff that pastors say and I'm like, how could anybody fall for that foolishness? Mm -hmm. But they don't know the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, people, a lot of Christians, their fear of God is from the precepts of men. Mm -hmm. And as long as your fear is of God is from the precepts of men, you can easily be deceived. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, if you get saved, read the Bible. Start from the book of John. Read the word of God. Be grounded in the word of God. Mm -hmm. The second thing I tell people to do is pray sanctification prayers. Mm -hmm. If you go on my website, firepowerministry.org, we have a lot of prayers. There's a prayer that is done by Dr. Luca Esco, Attacking the Enemy of My Calling. You know, I pray prayers like anything in me that's not like you let it be uprooted, take away uh, every lust out of my flesh, take away every veil out of my eyes, you know, let the veil be turned so that I can see the light of the gospel. I tell people to pray uh, Ephesians 1 from verse uh, 17 to the mm -hmm. end and Ephesians 3 from 14 to the end and pray it all the time. Father, you've given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. It is so important that mm -hmm. You pray sanctification prayers because the level of your sanctification is actually the level of your authority. Mm -hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? When the Bible says that, you know, that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that in us. So whatever it is that God is going to multiply, it has to be the power that is in you. 
God cannot multiply what you don't have in you. Mm-hmm. So the re- level of anointing, the level of revelation, the level of the word of God, the level of the power of God you have in you can be multiplied. Mm-hmm. So if you're just going around with, you know, you know, level one power, that's all you're going to be able to handle. You're mm-hmm. going to handle level one demons. Anything, you're going to have handled level one problems. So when the enemy comes after you and tempts you into stuff, you will fall because you don't have a death. Mm -hmm. So you have to grow that death, that maturity in the word of God. If not, if your so-called man of God does something stupid, goes and sleep with a a prostitute or something, you will backslide Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. you never had grounding of your own. Mm -hmm. So this is the time that everybody has to work their own salvation Mm -hmm. because God is not going to judge you by what your pastor did. Mm -hmm. God is not going to judge you by what you think. Mm -hmm. God is not going to judge you by the times we're in. Mm -hmm. He's going to judge you by his word. Mm -hmm. So we all have to be grounded in the word of God. Read it, eat it, drink it, swallow it. You know what I do when I go to bed at night? I play scriptures. Mm-hmm. I just I listen to I try to listen to the Bible from Re- Genesis to Revelation about four or five times a year. So I just listen to it. If I start from Genesis, if I fall asleep at Genesis 18, tomorrow I'll start again from Genesis 19. I don't listen to music. I don't let TV on when I'm going to sleep because you can go to sleep with TV on and then by 3 a.m. is some demonic program mm. and then you start having demons pulling your head. You know, I'm beating you in the head and you're wondering, I woke up in the morning and something had been beating me in the head. Why? Because <laughs> at 3 a.m., by 5 a.m. is a children's program, but you don't know what's happening at 3 a.m. Somebody was beating somebody in the head, you know, so yeah. So it's better to go, go, to, go to sleep with the word of God. You know, these are like really practical things, yes, but this, yes, it yes, affects yes. people. Yes. The atmosphere that you expose yourself mm. in is the atmosphere that's going to affect your spirit, mm. you know. So go to sleep. I go to sleep with the word of God. I still do it today and I will always do it. And I've listened to the word of God so many times that whenever people talk to me about anything, my mind runs to scriptures. Mm-hmm. Where is it written? Mm-hmm. The Bible says the word of God is a light or a, a light mm-hmm. onto your path and a lamp mm-hmm. onto your feet. So those is like attaching two flashlights onto your feet. Mm-hmm. Then it can direct your path in this world. Mm-hmm. So Drink it, eat it, listen to it over and over. Mm. That is the only advice I will give any Christians. Get grounded in the word. That's the only way you will not be deceived. Mm. And as you get grounded in the word, many things will leave you. The Bible says, you know, you, your mind will be renewed by the word of God. As you keep listening to the word, you'll be like, sometimes I'll listen, I'll go like, I've never heard that before, you know. Mm. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you wow. so much. And truly, um, it's <laughs> you've really proven that it's it's not just empty confidence. You're, mm. not, you're not just confident for confidence sake, mm-hmm. I'm just confident because you know, they told you that you're a Christian and you are, you know, above the enemy. But you really, there's so much intentionality back home. Yes. So much intentionality in your home. You saturate yourself with the word of God. You pray, you read You read the scriptures, you're intentional about your atmosphere. And it's also to encourage believers out there that, you know, some people will just read it one line in the Bible <laughs> that says... We trample up a six and scorpions, and they'll just hold and say yes. So, and then they will do absolutely nothing mm. aside from mm. that. And they'll and 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 then when you know, they experience counter attack, they will start blaming God and say, God, your word says, and this happened to me. Why? And also, truly, there's still so much work for us to do that we don't just we don't just run with empty. Um, emptiness yes, emptiness, yes. Mm. we're supposed to establish a depth in, a depth us, in us of yes. the word of god so mm. thank you so much ma okay so there's a question we get a lot and it has to do with addiction alcohol mm. um pornography masturbation it's a question that you know a lot of young people are facing and I, I, from your story you said you were born again but yet you're still struggling a bit with mm. alcohol mm-hmm. so what what um how did you break free? Yes, how did you break free and how, what um, is it advice tips, can you, advice give, can you yes. give people that struggling with addictions? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, sanctification. sanctification. You know, like I said, mm-hmm. salvation is free. But sanctification is a work of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But it is a work that the Holy Spirit needs your permission. Mm-hmm. If you, Most people that get saved never go through deliverance. Mm-hmm. You know, deliverance should be part of and parcel of every Christian life. Mm. Not just once. It should be a constant practice. They call it the Bible says in the in, in John 15 that you know that that the, the Lord is is the branch. You know, he's a husband man. We are the branch, branch right? Yes. So yes. any branch that bears fruit, yes. he prunes. Yes. The one that doesn't bear fruit, yes. he cuts yes. away. Yes. So the one that's bearing fruit, what does he do? He prunes. If a hedge is growing out there and you don't prune that hedge, 
It's going to get choked with weed. The pruning is the deliverance. Yes, pruning is deliverance. Everybody Mm. needs deliverance all the time. Mm. Because we live in a polluted world. Mm. You can be standing in the store trying to buy something and they're playing some crazy song by one Mm. secular artist and before you realize it, you're already dancing to it and you don't even know the stuff that I've got into your head. You know, shoot your mama, sleep with your father. (laughs) You know these things that, you know. And then these things come into your mind. You're driving on the streets. The Bible says you should not let your eyes see bad stuff. You see, they want to advertise a pen to some naked woman and craziness. So there's a lot of pollution in our world. Mm. So in our Christian life, we have to be intentional about getting this pollution out. Mm. So mm. deliverance is a part and part, should be a part and parcel of every Christian life. Mm-hmm. And all the time, you cannot conquer what you don't confront. Mm-hmm. And you cannot confront what you don't identify. So people have to always, ad- first of all, realize that as a Christian, it is when you got saved, it's just your spirit that got saved. Yes. Mm-hmm. Your soul, which is your yes. mind, your emotions, mm-hmm. and your will, does not get saved immediately. Mm-hmm. It has to be renewed with the word of, God, the word of God, right? That is why John 15 verse 3 says you are clean by the word that I've spoken to you. The third thing that you need, your flesh is never getting saved yeah. <laughs> until the Lord comes and gives us a new body. So when you get safe and your spirit is safe, you have to realize that in your soul, there are habits and things that have been formed in your soul that you have to clean out. People, sometimes you might have to actually go for a deliverance program and go intentionally to go get go through deliverance. So if you're struggling with things, don't accept it. Don't accept don't accept the the lies of the mm-hmm. devil. Mm-hmm. You know, salvation was not just about, you know, the, Jesus did not just die on the cross for just salvation. He also died for your deliverance. He died for your healing. Mm-hmm. You understand? The chastisement of our peace was placed mm-hmm. upon him. You understand? So anything that is bringing rancor in your soul, mm-hmm. you have to deal with it and get back to the world to help you deal with it. If not, find an anointed minister and go there and go for deliverance. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And when, because people get saved and they don't go through deliverance, and this is very dangerous because sometimes people get saved, they feel the call, they run off into the call, and they don't go for deliverance, they don't go for cleansing, they don't allow the processing of the Lord, mm-hmm. and then they Years fall. Later, they start struggling you know, with look at what happened to Moses. Mm-hmm. Moses felt the Anger. call. Mm-hmm. Moses left Pharaoh's house and went to kill an Egyptian. And they almost killed Moses. Moses had to leave his home and go in the wilderness for 40 years. And then he came back as a god to Pharaoh. You cannot fight Pharaoh when you're still living in Pharaoh's court. Mm. And a lot of Christians are still living in Pharaoh's court. Mm. And they think that they can fight Pharaoh. Oh, I'm a believer. I'm a this. I can trample upon serpents and scorpions. The last thing I will say about that, Psalm 138 verse 2b. Say, God has exalted his word above all his names. Mm -hmm. You see why Christians will pray in the name of Jesus and nothing happens? It's because God exalts his word above his name. So if you're not obedient to the word, the name doesn't work for you. Whether that name is Jehovah Jireh, healer, or provider, you know. So if you're not obedient to God's word, the name of the Lord will not work. So people have to realize that you have to read the word, know it, be obedient to it, allow it to clean you. Like I said, John 15 verse 3 say you're clean by the word that I've spoken to you. So this should be an intentional thing. Like I said, go through deliverance, get cleansed, get sanctification prayers. Like If you go on my website, uh, uh, firepowerministry.org, or you go on my YouTube channel, I mean, there's a message I did years ago called Soul Hunters. A lot of people watch that message and go like, God, my soul... Has my my soul has been fragmented and I need to gather back mm. the fragmented pieces of my soul. Mm. So people have to be intentional about that. Don't just get safe and run into ministry and run into that. Mm. Make mm. sure you clean out the junk that was in your life. My first book I wrote was When Your Levy Breaks, How to Pump the Junk Out. Mm. Make sure you mm. pump the junk that was in your life before mm. you got saved. Mm. And then you can be able to walk. Don't accept this stuff, you know. But a lot of people like it. You know, if you like it, slave that love their chains cannot be delivered. Mm. Mm. Slaves, you have to hate your chains. Yeah. Slaves that love their yeah, chains. Slaves who love their chains. You know, yeah, slaves who love their chains shall remain in their bondage. Mm. Mm. Get it, you know. So if you don't if you love your chains, you cannot be delivered. Mm. So you have to hate it. Hate your sin will perfect hatred. Mm. And then you will be you would fight in mm. every way. And God knows because you know he knows our hearts. Yeah. You can hide your sin from me, but you can't hide it from the yeah. Lord. He knows our hearts and he knows when people are really crying out for deliverance. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. nobody comes to the Lord with a with a deep cry that doesn't get yes. relieved. Yeah.
Wonderful. My wow. goodness, it has been so rich. Yes. Amen. Ah, thank you so thank much, you, Thank you. So Always a blessing. Thank you so much for blessing us and for reminding us the importance of doing the deep work yes. before launching out. A lot of us just like to get the anointing and launch out. <laughs> but this is just a call to reflect on your life and, you know, call to sanctification. the call to sanctification. Yes. So important. Thank you so thank much, you, man. man. Um, so blessed. <laughs> Can you just pray for us Amen. and for our viewers as well? Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you, Lord, for today. And thank you for your work upon everyone listening to the Amen. sound of our voice. Lord Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that the veil that is upon all nations will be torn in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, O oh God, that the hearts of people will turn back to you in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, Father, that as they listen right now, O oh God, that the chokehold of the enemy upon their souls will be broken in the name of Amen. Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that your acts of fire will go deep in the foundation of everyone listening to the sound of my voice and begin to cut and uproot every tree you do not plant in their lives in the name Amen. of Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that your hand, oh God, will be heavy upon our lives, upon our lives, oh God. Father, you can't leave us the way that we are. Father, that your hand will be heavy, your hand of sanctification, your hand of deliverance, your hand of mercy in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that the people that are listening right now, that any power, any spirit, any personality that has held them captive by the power in the blood of Jesus, by the mercy of God, that your hand of deliverance will go forth right now. There's no distance in the spirit and begin to break these strongholds upon the hearts of people in the name of Amen. Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will begin to draw the hearts of people back to you. Amen. Father, we cannot come to you in our own strength. We cannot come to you, Father, in our own, in our generation. There's so much that has held us captive. There's so much, oh God, that is coming against the hearts and the souls of people. Lord, that in your mercy, by your own hand, oh God, that you would deliver your people in Jesus' name. Amen. That you would turn our hearts back to you in the name Amen. of Jesus. That, Father, you begin to draw us deeper into your presence. Give us a hunger for your word, a hunger for prayer, a hunger for righteousness in the name of Jesus. Let, let the purifying fire of God, you said you're going to come, oh God, in the last days as a purifier, oh God, that you begin to purify us, Amen. that we might offer unto you a sacrifice in righteousness mm. in the name of Jesus. Mm. But I pray, oh God, for your daughters and this work that they are doing, oh God, that you will give them a mouth and a wisdom. You will open doors and people will hear and they will be set free in the name of Amen. Jesus. I thank you, King of Glory, for the work that you're doing, that our generation will not be lost, that you will even begin to raise up young people all over the world, oh God, that will hear your heart and they will come to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. King of Glory, we give you praise. Amen. Father, we thank you. Like right now, oh God, we are in Nigeria. I pray, oh God, that your hand of mercy will be upon this nation Amen. in the name of Jesus. That you will not allow Nigeria to go down. Amen. You will not allow the nations to go down in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I cover this broadcast in the blood of Jesus. Jesus. I cover every one of us in the blood of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, it's been my thank pleasure. You. Thank you, Max. It's been our pleasure. And yes. if um if anyone would like to um reach out to you, if if they want to reach out to you, is there an email address? Or? Actually, the best place to reach out to me is on Twitter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can send me a message, you can DM me on Twitter. My my Twitter is uh, Stella underscore Emmanuel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you can also also um we have a YouTube channel. Okay. You know, you can find me on YouTube, Firepower Ministry and on our Ministry. website. Firepower Ministry, but my main website, drstellamd.com. Mm -hmm. If you go, if you go to drstellamd.com from there, you can see all my other stuff that I do. Okay. Yeah, That's but the best place to reach me is Twitter. My <laughs> email is so choked up. If you send me, I'll never find it. I'll never see it. <laughs> so if you DM me on Twitter, you'll be able to. Yeah, and just said, oh, I heard about you on TED. And <laughs> I actually read all my messages on Twitter and respond oh, wow. to them. Wow. So, so. <laughs> wonderful. Okay, noted. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Mom. Yes. Once again, thank God bless you. you. Yeah. Yes, and um, you can also reach out to us via email, truetalkwithted at gmail.com. You can follow us on Instagram, truetalkwithted, and on Facebook, truetalkwithted. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Have a lovely, lovely day. Bye. Bye.